Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts and BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to make cast resin fish scale knife handles. Now this is the finished product. This is an AEBL stainless steel fillet knife, which I just finished. When I started this project, I wanted it to have a kind of unique, one of a, one of a kind set of handles or scales. Um, knife handles are called scales, so these are actually fish scale knife scales. Um, Anyway, I came up with the idea of trying to make fish scale looking knife handles. Um, and it was quite a project. I, I, I failed multiple, multiple times before I got one to work. I'm just going to show you what worked. I started out with a wooden dowel uh, and a Dremel grinder with a little round bit. And I just hollowed out the end. I then ground away, um, kind of make a triangle out of it. This was going to be my tool for creating the fish scales. So I took modeler's clay. Now this is the clay that is not air drying but um, you heat it up in the oven to cure it or to dry it or harden it. I used this uh, press tool that I made and very carefully I made a large enough piece of, uh, of this modeler's clay to look like the fish scales. I then cut it to the size that I wanted and made a little uh, mold out of PVC trim that I had around, and I poured liquid silicone um, mold gel or mold putty uh, in, into that mold. Now I used other materials uh, for the mold prior, uh, and they all failed. The, the liquid silicone really was the best. And I got this down at uh, Michael's Art Supply. Once I had the molds finished, and I made two of them because I wanted to cast uh, the handles using the exact same colors. So I wanted to mix them once and, and cast you know, two handles, one handle for each side. I wanted the, it to be two-tone. Uh, so I used a lighter blue on one side of each uh, mold. And then I poured uh, darker resin on the other side. Now this is um, thick set resin from a company called uh, TotalBoat.com. It's really great resin to work with because it's very thin. Um, and it takes a long time for it to harden, uh, which basically means that any air bubbles that are trapped inside very easily have time to get to the surface and dissipate. So you don't end up with any air bubbles in your casting. I left this for two days uh, before I even attempted to take it out of the mold. And at this point, it is not hard enough to really work with yet. Uh, but I can take it out of the mold and have a look to see how they came out probably want to wait five or seven days before you really start to grind this stuff before it's you know nice and hard. So this is the first step in the process. So now I've got um, a duplicate of my modeler's clay model that I made of the uh, fish scales. It's in two-tone. Um, I ground the back of those down as thin as I could get them on the 2x72 and then I put them back into my knife handle molds and I'm pouring additional uh, Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy uh, Clear this time on top of it. Um, I wanted the clear because I want to be able to finish these knife handles. I want to be able to carve them. I want to be able to polish them. Uh, if I had the texture of the fish scales, I would actually be just carving into those or grinding into those as I uh, shaped and profiled uh, the handles. So after that dried for a few days, I took out of the mold the finished uh, knife scales or knife handles. And these are ready uh, to mount onto the fillet knife. Now this video is really um, talking about or showing how I made the, the handles themselves, but I am going to run through uh, real quick, real quick uh, how I mounted them you know, onto the blade and, and how I polish this stuff, the resin. So the first step, I glued with epoxy uh, yellow liners onto the back of each of those scales. I clamped them onto a nice flat surface with some parchment paper in between. When they dried, I clamped uh, the two sets together and I shaped the forward edge of the handles. Uh, you always want to shape those um, and you know polish them prior to mounting them on the knife because you just can't get, you can't polish that part without ruining the blade once it's glued in place. Now I have not waited the full five to seven days here, but I was very pleased uh, 
that the, the front edge really polished up pretty nicely. So the next step is going to be to glue uh, the actual uh, knife blank, fillet knife blank, right onto one of the uh, sides of the handles. I do this with a two-part epoxy. Um, I clamp it in, pos in position. I clean off any residue uh, that, that oozes out onto the blade with a little alcohol wipe, and I let that dry overnight. After it dries, I can use the pre-drilled holes through the knife blank as my drill guide. Notice that I've got a piece of wood underneath it as a backing board uh, so that there's no blowout from the epoxy. I've also got a clamp on that drill press so that that blade can't spin on me. Um, I do the same thing for the other side. So once I get both sides glued up, I also glue in the four, in this case, four uh, eighth inch stainless steel pins. Now I'm going to start to grind away those pins. I want to use a coarse grit belt on this so that I don't generate too much heat but I also want to be real careful and not create any coarse grit uh, grind lines in that epoxy uh, resin handles. I profile the, these just like you would profile any handles. They, they grind very easily. I did it right on the 2x72 grinder with a coarse grit belt. And once I get everything uh, shaped, then I can move on to um, you know, getting rid of the hard edges now, I actually round over that top edge right on the 2x72. I, I try to get as much done on the 2x72 as possible. It's just, it's just very fast this way. You have to be real careful uh, that you don't touch the blade uh, to the belt grinder because you can ruin a blade in a heartbeat. I use the 2-inch contact wheel at the bottom of the flat platen uh, just to start to carve that inside curve of the handles. And then I go to an oscillating sander. Now, I sanded these uh, 400 grit, 600, um, 1,000, and 2,000. Um, I find that with uh, the resin, especially the Total Boat uh, Thick Set resin, you really have to uh, sand up to at least 1,000 in order to get a, a, an easy, a good finish on these things. Um, in between each, or with each different grit, I also hand sanded. And what I do is I don't spend a tremendous amount of time hand sanding. Then when I'm all done, I go to the buffing wheel. And when I'm done buffing, I usually end up going back a couple of grits and doing it again, just to get out any of those little scratches that I kind of missed uh, the first time around. Polished with a little uh, buffing, comp comp <laughs> buffing compound and the handles were nice and shiny. The final uh, step in finishing this knife was just to, to sharpen it. Um, I sharpen the knives right on the 2x72. I start with 120 grit, um, and I work my way all the way to 2,000. And then I use a, um, a leather stroping belt and just finish it off that way. It's a very uh, fast, kind of an easy way of sharpening a knife, and you can, you can really get a good edge on it you know, once you've practiced a little bit. So this is just finishing up the sharpening. Um, I don't even use uh, the 2x72, I never turn it on. I just use it to hold uh, you know, that leather belt in place. And this knife, as you can see, is, is razor sharp. Anyway, this is the finished product. So this is a two-tone fish scale knife handles or knife scales. Uh, all made with uh, TotalBoat.com uh, thick set epoxy, which I absolutely love. Uh, these are cast uh, with a mold that I made um, you, you know, using that little press tool. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and consider cons um, subscribing to this YouTube channel. I'd like to give you all an invite to join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Uh, and if you're interested in making your own knives, uh, please check out the book that Jason Northgard and I put out about a year and a half ago called Introduction to Knife Making. And that can be found um, on Amazon.com uh, or on my website, which is BergKnifeMaking.com. Thank you very much.